Good day guys, welcome aboard on my channel Ship Captain's Diary. Today, I am going to discuss to you the basic tutorial with regards to stability and trim cargo loadable quantity. We all know that our main job on board the vessel as a seafarer is to deliver safely cargoes all over the world. However, before we could do that, we must know first what preparations we should do before we can carry our cargo. There are certain points that we must determine first before cargo is being loaded on board. Normally, it is on the ship's ballast voyage that the new transport order is received. There is a continuous communication between the ship, charter, and shipper regarding the loading order. One of the first questions that we must resolve on board is how much cargo can the ship load? Look, this is the most important question that must be answered as soon as possible once the order was received on board. It is due to the reason that there are many companies competing in the market with available ships. The ship must be able to readily reply on this message to avoid the cargo from slipping away. Losing the cargo means losing of money to the ship owners and it may take them a few days or even weeks again to find another suitable cargo. There are many details that the ship officer must look into before he can decide the quantity of cargo to load. Familiarity with such is important to be able to determine the suitable arrangement for the order and effectively complete the voyage. Usually, the officer in charge in cargo calculation was the chief officer and submitted to the master for checking and sending to the office for approval before sending to charter shippers and other parties involved in loading this cargo. It is essential then that the cargo declared or the amount of cargo the ship can carry is up to her maximum allowable capacity within acceptable stability and in conformance with all limiting points from the loading port up to her discharging port. Thus, in deciding the amount of cargo the ship can carry, the different stages of the voyage must be carefully studied to determine the limiting points which may restrict the amount of cargo the ship is able to carry. The amount of cargo the ship is able to carry may depend on the vessel's dead weight available which may be limited by draft imposed on load line rows as well the different water depths and densities available in ports and canals. Also, we must consider the volume of space for the cargo available and the amount of cargo to be carried as stipulated in the charter party. Note that all ships are subject to the international load line regulations and has a designated dead weight tonnage for her carrying capacity to conform with these rules. Load lines are being marked on the ship's sides which defines the maximum draft the ship may float in all sea areas, rivers, and harbors with the minimum required freeboard. For our topic today, what we are going to do is to have the basic exercises and cargo calculations using her displacement, dead weights, light ships, and identifying some non-cargo weights that are present on board. We will also discuss the different water densities that affects our cargo carrying capacity to where our ship is floating. So all are welcome here guys if you wanted to learn but please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will be updated every time I have new video. So please take note guys that I will be discussing this topic step by step for you to be able to follow and understand and hopefully able to apply once you are on board. So first, let's study the terms that we are going to use in our discussion. 
Archimedes' principle states that when a body is wholly or partially immersed in a fluid, is equal to the weight of the fluid that the body displaces. Principles of flotation. When a body is floating in a liquid, the weight of the liquid displaced equals to the weight of the body. Displacement. Commonly used to denote the mass of a ship in tons. Technically, it is the mass of water displaced by a ship and, when floating freely, the mass of water displaced equals to the mass of the ship. Light ship. The mass of the empty ship, without any cargo, fuel, lubricating oil, ballast water, fresh water, consumable stores, passengers, crew, and their effects. Load displacement. The total mass of the ship when she is floating in salt water, with her summer load line at the water surface. Present displacement. It is the mass of the ship at present. It is the sum of the light displacement of the ship and everything on board at present. Deadweight. Deadweight of a ship is the total mass of cargo, fuel, fresh water, etc., that a ship can carry when she is floating in salt water with her summer load line at the water surface. Therefore, deadweight of a ship is equals to load displacement minus light ship. Deadweight may also mean as the sum of all weights on board. Deadweight besides the cargo includes items such as the weights on board, deductibles or non-cargo weights which comprise of bunkers, stores, ballast, fresh water, and other items not categorized as cargo. Thus, cargo weight is equals to deadweight minus non-cargo weights. Non-cargo weights can be categorized into fuel oils, these oils, lube oils, ballast water, fresh water, stores, constants are the unknown weights on board. We can therefore summarize as follows. Displacement minus light ship equals dead weight minus non-cargo weights is equals to cargo weight. Or cargo weights plus non-cargo weight equals dead weight plus light ships is equals to displacement. Now let's proceed to the exercises. Example number one, the vessel with a displacement of 85,843 metric tons is to load up to her summer load line. Light ship is 10,462 metric tons. Cargo weights on board as follows. Fuel oil, 1,120 metric tons. Diesel oil, 120 metric tons. Fresh water, 150 metric tons. Ballast, 200 metric tons. Constant, 200 metric tons. Find out how much cargo she can load. So the solution is first we have to find the sum of all non-cargo weights fuel oil diesel oil fresh water ballast water constant equals non-cargo weights 1790 metric tons then we have to find cargo to load by this solution Displacement, 85,843 metric tons minus light ships, 10,462 metric tons equals dead weight, 75,381 minus non-cargo weights of 1,790 metric tons. Total cargo to load is 73,591 metric tons. Note that in this condition, we will assume that no draft restriction and no limiting load line zones all throughout the voyage. The reason vessel is loaded up to her summer draft. It is vital to know any limiting draft during the voyage to determine the exact amount of cargo the vessel can carry. Example number 2. The vessel's light ship is 9,180 metric tons. She has remaining on board of fuel 1,050 metric tons. Diesel oil 100 metric tons, lube oil 50 metric tons, fresh water 170 metric tons, ballast water 49,870 metric tons, and with her constant of 150 metric tons. Find her present displacement. In this case, we have to find the displacement with this solution. Dead weight 51,400 metric tons plus light ships 9,180 metric tons equals displacement. 60,580 metric tons. You have to take note the solution on how to find the dead weight by adding all those uh, non-cargo weights. Note in this case the dead weight is the sum of all weights on board including non-cargo weights and cargo weights.
Displacement versus density. Displacement is also equal to the volume of water displaced times the density of water. When density of water changes, the volume of water will also change. Any increase decrease in density means an increase decrease in volume of water displaced, and so does the draft. For any draft to remain the same in the water of different densities, displacement must be changed. Look in this example number 3. The vessel's displacement is 28,360 metric tons. A. Find the volume of seawater displaced. B. Find the volume of brackish water displaced if the density of water is 1.013 ton per cubic meter. So, in question A, we have to find the volume of seawater displaced. Volume equals weight over density. So, volume of seawater displaced 28,360 metric tons divided by 1.025 tons per cubic meter. Volume equals 27,668.3 cubic meter. In question B, we have to find the volume of brackish water displaced if the density of water is 1.013 ton per cubic meters. Volume equals weight over density. Volume of seawater displaced equals 28,360 metric tons divided by 1.013 ton per cubic meter. Volume equals 27,996 cubic meters. Notice that although it is same displacement but at different densities, the volume of displacement changes. Hence, the change in draft. Let's have a look on this example number 4. When ship is floating in a certain draft, the ship's underwater volume is 32,530 cubic meters. Find her displacement if she is floating in seawater and find her displacement if she is floating in brackish water density of 1.015 ton per cubic meter. In finding her displacement if she is floating in seawater, displacement equals volume times density. Displacement equals 32,530 cubic meters times 1.025 equals displacement 33,343.25 metric tons. In finding her displacement, if she is floating in brackish water density of 1.015 ton per cubic meters, displacement equals volume times density. Displacement equals 32,530 cubic meters times 1.015 ton per cubic meters. Displacement equals 33,017.95 metric tons. Please note that the density of water changes and so the volume of water displaced. Any increase or decrease in density means an increase or decrease in volume of water displaced. Hence, an increase or decrease in draft. For the draft to remain the same in water of different densities, the displacement of the vessel must change. Alright guys, then I have a bonus question for you. The vessel's summer displacement is 12,450 metric tons. Her light ship is 1,490 metric tons with the following weights on board. Fresh water 120 metric tons, FO 350 metric tons, DO 70 metric tons, and constant of 100 metric tons. Find how much cargo to be loaded so that she will not exceed her summer displacement. Please put your answer below on the comment section for my checking. Please watch out for part 2 of our video which we are now going to do the actual cargo calculation. <music> Thank you.